Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Form Check Friday. All right, guys, welcome back for another episode of Form Check Friday. Today's first video comes from Charlie. Uh, now, Charlie, I'm sure I've seen his name pop up before. Maybe we uh, answered one of your questions for question of the day. Maybe we've done a form check before. I don't know, but you seem familiar. So thanks for sending your video in. Now, Charlie's doing some deadlifts here. Uh, now, he sent me a single rep with a maximal load. Now, I just wanted to make a note that sometimes this can be pretty hard to, uh, to do like a proper sort of technique assessment on. It can sometimes uh, be really tough to pick out what exactly is going wrong because sometimes form just breaks down when you get that heavy sometimes it's not a specific thing it's just it's it's tough to lift maximal weights uh, and until you're you know really really technically good um, things break down and uh, that's just kind of the way it is but anyways past the point a little bit so Charlie here um, not only just barely misses his rep, but he fell over and he laughed at himself, so it's okay. Um, the biggest thing here is he says with Max is he's just having a really hard time keeping his back flat. You can see he gets a little bit of hip rise right as he initiates the lift. And because of that, not able to get the back extended to finish at lockout, gets stuck just below lockout. Um, we've talked a lot about this before. Pretty much just a, a factor of just losing that back position off the floor. You might need to reconsider your maxes, if this is the case, every time you get really heavy, you might need to, as I've said before, we might need to address the round back versus flat back thing uh, and treat, you know, rounded back deadlifts where you lose it as missed lifts, regardless of whether you can finish the lockout or not, and just train in that range more often so that you're stronger in that technique. Uh, or it could just be that with maximal loads, that's the thing that's gonna break down. Ideally, over time, your threshold will increase and you'll be able to lift more weight with that flat back position before you start to lose it. Uh, but that may always be your fault um, or your, sorry, your, your issue that, that shows up. So one thing I would try to do to fix that is some pause deadlifts just off the floor. And I'm talking like this far off the floor. So if you can work on that, very bottom range of motion where you start to lose it. Uh, maybe even a very small deficit deadlift. Uh, it can be tough to do deficit deadlift sumo because that extra half an inch can really throw you off. But in this case where you're losing it right off the floor, it might be helpful. Uh, so let's try some of that stuff. See how it goes. Maybe send in another video. Best of luck to you, Charlie. So our next video today comes from Ryan Pittman. Now he sent us some meat footage here. Uh, luckily he's got a couple different angles. He sent us, I believe his opener and his second or third attempt. So we'll take a look at his squat here. Now his first one from the back is a, a, a first or second attempt. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but he says he notices a little bit of his back caving and he notices some knee caving. He's wondering if those are uh, things that he should be addressing. Now, number one, it looks like you're just getting a little bit loose in the bottom. And I think that's probably your biggest culprit here. When you hit the bottom like that and we tend to see that back sort of collapse and cave forward a little bit. I think the biggest thing is just getting a little bit loose. Now you can see in, I believe this is his third attempt here, it becomes a little bit more pronounced. We hit the bottom and the sort of, the hips rise before the rest of the body rises. Again, I think it's just a little bit of overall loss of tightness in the lift. One thing that he mentioned in his video, uh, or sorry, in his email with these videos, was that he was noticing a little bit of knee cave. Uh, he's wondering if maybe he should be thinking about bringing his stance in. Now from looking at his video, I would say that probably isn't a bad idea uh, because with that wider stance, it can be a little bit tougher to maintain your position and to, to ensure that your knees are staying appropriately above your feet. So I, that's one thing that I would look at for sure is trying to line up those ankles and those knees a little bit better. It also looks like as you hit the hole, we're getting a little bit of foot collapse and we've talked about that on the channel before, but really try and grip the floor with your feet and try and watch. You can see in your chucks really well uh, that right as you hit the bottom, we kind of get that flattening out of the arches. So let's try and avoid that. Now with your deadlift here, Ryan, it looks like you do a really good job of setting your back but as soon as you initiate the pull, it all comes out of position. 
So I think, again, just a little bit rushed, specifically in that first like inch range of motion. You're doing a good job of setting everything, just be a little bit more patient so it stays where you put it. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we can see it on that video. We can also see it on uh, one of your heavier attempts here. And you can see the same sort of thing. Sets it really good. As soon as he starts to pull, everything pulls forward over the bar again. So let's try and be a little bit more patient off the floor. Try and create that feeling of pushing the floor away more so than trying to pull back on the bar. And hopefully that helps him. Up next, we got Maximilian sent in some videos. Now, I think either there's an issue with uh, my phone and the way that Max sent this through, I think, Google Photos, uh, or maybe he just submitted it like this, but it's in slow motion. So we might get Dylan to speed it up because uh, I think it's like a three minute, three minute video. Um, but anyways, uh, all that just to say, honestly, your squat looks really good. I probably wouldn't change much about your squat. Uh, everything looks like it's well in line. And like I said, I wouldn't change much about your squat. But with the deadlift, we do see a little bit more breakdown in the technique here. So when he sets up, his back angle is almost just parallel to the floor. And what I'd like for you to try and achieve, Max, is for you to sit your butt down a little bit, push back on those heels, tip everything back a little bit more so you can get that back angle, even just a couple more degrees upright. I think that's gonna go a long ways towards allowing you to stack your vertebra a little bit more, reduce the amount of shear force, and increase the amount of compressive force coming down into your hips, which is driving the movement. So if we can get you a tiny bit more upright, I think that's gonna go a long way in your deadlift. That's sort of a, a, a long way of saying that, but let's try that out. All right, so next up is James Williamson. Now, James sent in a video uh, and he's just sort of, uh, not disregarded, but thrown all of his equipment off of him uh, for this little bit of training. So he's not using a belt, he's not using knee sleeves and things like that. And he's said that he notices a little bit of a difference in his technique. Now, if you watch the video, you can see pretty distinctly as he hits the bottom in each rep, we're getting a little bit of a, a what's called a chest fall pattern. So we're getting a little bit of that dip forward, uh, the bar's rolling him forward, <coughs> excuse me, ever so slightly on each rep and it gets progressively uh, more and more noticeable as he goes through. I think this is a set of 10 or 12. But the biggest thing here is I don't think that it's necessarily a technical issue. I think if you can obviously keep those knees forward a little bit more as you change directions out of the bottom, because when those knees come back, that's often when the back goes forward, the hip comes up, and we see that sort of chest fall dip pattern. But a couple of exercises you might want to try is incorporating something like uh, a safety bar squat, a pin squat, or a pause squat. So really strengthening that bottom range of motion uh, and reinforcing a good back or a good pattern with your back out of the hole. And the other thing that this kind of suggests to me is a little bit of a quad weakness. So if you want to go a step further and look at maybe some of the bodybuilding style work that you're going to do, you might want to think about things like lunges, split squats, leg press, anything that's going to be a little more quad focused. Um, so I think less of a technical issue here and more of something we can maybe address with programming. So let's try some of those movements out and see if over four to six weeks you start to notice a little bit of a difference in how you're coming out of the bottom of your squat. All right, so this last video here comes from Sadara. Now Sadara said he was uh, having a lot of issue with his deadlift. He said he found a position with his back where it's a lot more locked in. He's learned to be a lot more patient off the floor. As you can see, we're still a little bit rounded out, but he says he's really smoothed his lockout out uh, after watching some of these videos and uh, has found a bit of a better mechanic. So I would say, Sadar, number one with your deadlift, keep fighting that good fight, keep trying to get better extension, trying to get better shoulder position, better lat activation, that kind of stuff. Because it, I mean, you've already, see, already seen some of the benefit of getting into a better position with your deadlift. So let's continue to chip away at that. Uh, it still looks like there's some things lagging there, but it also seems like you know what needs to be addressed. So just continue doing what you're doing. In regards to your squat here, man, I would say the biggest thing is that you're cutting them a little bit high on the first few of this set. Thing is, as the set goes on, your depth gets better. And a lot of those issues from the first few reps start to sort of fix themselves. So we're able to get into a little bit, better, little bit of a better position by going to a more appropriate depth. So by going a little bit deeper, we're getting a little bit less chest fall, 
We're able to stay a little bit more upright. We're getting a little bit less sort of bouncing around uh, forwards and backwards uh, on the feet. So I would say do your best to make sure that your depth is a little bit more consistent and looks a little bit more like those last two or three reps of that set. But that's it for Form Check Friday today, guys. Thanks again for sending in your submissions. We're up to July 13th as of this video dropping. So keep sending them in, calgarybarbell2 at gmail.com. That's where we'll receive those videos. If you have any questions, comments about anything you saw today, you wanna have more of a discussion about some of the, the technique you've seen in this video, comment below, leave a like if you liked it, and we'll see you guys next Friday.